Let's set up a Linux desktop x86 computer to control the Ricoh Theta Z1 over a USB cable. We'll show you how to put the camera to sleep, wake it up, take pictures, all from the USB API. Make sure the camera is connected. Make sure you can see the camera with LSUSB. Grab libptp. Let's get started. libptp is open source software. Just go into SourceForge, grab the latest version. It's a bit old, but it will, it will work fine. Save the tar gzipped file to your local computer and extract it. After you extract it, we're going to need to also install some libraries before we can build it. The main one we're going to need is libusb dev. So just use apt on a standard uh, Ubuntu. I'm using 2004. Um, just install a USB, libusb dev, and we're good to go. Change into the libptp directory, then run configure. Hopefully there's no showstopper errors and we'll be good to go for make. Run make, if it works, then run make install. I have PTP cam installed in user local bin and lib PTP in user local lib. Test it out with info. Congratulations, it's installed. Let's keep going forward. Let's take a picture. We have to wait for the camera to stitch the image. There's a um, receiving error, but the camera, the picture actually did take place. We'll fix this soon. Now let's list the images on it. So again, in the previous step, the picture was taken. Uh, you just, when, when you have the response code back, it was a bit blank. We're going to get the file with the handler. Ideally, this would be in a script when you actually are using a PTP cam. You can just drop it into a bash script or something. For now, we'll just do it manually so you can actually see the commands at work here. It transferred the file back down to your Ubuntu workstation. Yes, uh, I don't want it in my source code. Transfer is super fast, quite reliable in my experience. I'm going to use free, free software on Ubuntu. It's called FF, FSP Viewer. Uh, if you have any questions about this or other viewing software on Linux, uh, you can drop a comment in, I'll explain it. But basically, it works similar to the Rico Theta app on Windows and Mac. You just drag and drop the image over. This one's with the Z1. I was previously using the SC2. Z1 has much better image here. Man, after using the SC2, I can tell you the Z1, in my opinion, is worth the price difference. There was that error before on the when we were receiving it, the response. Let's fix it right now. Go to PTPH, change the packet length from 8 to 28. Then let's do a make clean and rebuild the um, PTP cam and, and lib PTP. So clean it and then remake it and then let's install it again. So now we've got the modified uh, version of PTP cam or, or lib PTP. We'll install it. So make sure it works. I'll transfer it to a terminal so you can see it easier. So let's take a picture. Previous problem was solved. There's still, there's still a typo. We can fix it. Uh, the typo in capture doesn't affect the performance of the app. So I'm just going to go forward right now. Although if you want to, you could, you could fix the string. So let's go back to the terminal. Uh, I have my webcam pointed at the Z1 so you can see what's going on here. Uh, the USB API is much better uh, in some ways than the web API because there's more commands that are available for the 
the USB API, including setting the camera into live streaming mode, which is not possible with the, the web API. So currently, if you just show properties, uh, it is in still image mode, and you can also see it on the webcam here. But I'm going to change it to a live streaming mode. So you set the value, and this is in the API documentation. So now it's in live streaming mode. You can you can it's a little blurry, but you can still see it. So that's kind of cool that you could set the camera into live streaming mode with the USB API. Let's check out the API documentation so you can decipher this thing yourself here. So go to the Rico Developer Connection. This is the official API documentation for the USB API. Uh, there's a property and there's a value in this case. So the property from the API documentation is 0x5013. We then set the value per the uh, documentation and we just change it back to still capture mode. Using the documentation as a reference, we can now set it into movie shooting or video mode. Now you can start and stop the video. There's a couple of tricks uh, that I'll show you to get the video properly started. But this will at least put you in the video mode here. It's pretty cool. Another super cool thing is that you can actually put the camera into sleep mode and also wake it up with the USB API. So let's go to the API documentation, find sleep mode, uh, set the property, and then the value is, is a binary one or zero. It's in sleep. Awesome. But even more awesome is that we could wake it up from sleep mode. Assuming that you're probably doing long-term time lapse or something with a camera where it's long-term, you're going to want to disable sleep delay. You can, of course, disable this with the web API. However, you know, if you're using the USB API, why not just set it in your script with the USB API? So go to the API documentation and get the, get the property for it. So if it's zero, it's going to be off. I've already disabled the power off and the sleep delay with this particular camera. I'm going to also show you how to do power off, which is a little bit more tricky. And I'll show you the little problem here because uh, you first go to this auto power off delay. This is actually the wrong API because if you read it carefully, which I didn't initially here, uh, it's not going to work. It's only for the S and the SC. It's actually not for the Z1. The Z1 actually has a different setting here that you need to kind of go through the documentation and find it. But I'll help you out here. I'll just tell you what it is real quick. So hidden away is auto power off delay second. Of course, it's properly documented, but I'm, and of course, I didn't read the documentation carefully. But this is the property to set to uh, control the Z1 sleep delay. Let's put the camera back into video mode. It's uh, actually a little tricky to start the video. Well, it's not tricky, but you do need this extra parameter, which uh, is not in the documentation. So a lot of people get hung up on this one, but I'll show you quickly. It's actually very simple once you know the actual command. The image mode is much higher resolution than the video mode. So when possible, take uh, images. But video, you have to specify the parameter comma zero, comma zero, comma one. Do you see that the extra three parameters I have on the end of the, um, the first value? So with that, you can now uh, start and stop the video. So for to stop the video, you see I have the extra parameter. That one is documented, that 0x FFFF. You can safely ignore the PTP IO error. It seems to work fine to start and stop the video with this command sequence. Thanks for joining us. This is the fourth video in the USB API series. The previous video focused on the Raspberry Pi. Subscribe to the channel for future updates and have a great day.